This is probably the first and most important silent film score ever written. Uh, Shostakovich had already, by this period, he wrote this in 1929, for five or six years, been supporting his family. His father died when he was quite young by accompanying sil silent films in many, at least three or four different cinemas, Nienievsky Prospect in Leningrad, as it was then. And he was aware of the bad arrangements which the orchestras were playing in the different cinemas. One of the reasons they kept on playing the same music and same arrangements over again, uh, I know from the cinemas, is that they only got played for performances. They didn't get any money for rehearsing, so rehearsing a new score for them was not interesting. They didn't get paid. It was, uh, but his ideal, when he was noticed by Traubeck and Kozintsev, uh, that his music would uh, come, uh, be suitable for their style of film, Fex, the factory of the eccentric uh, actor, which was disbanded after this film was made, sadly, uh, he could realise his own ambitions to write a proper symphonic score, seriously written to accompany a film. Unfortunately, it was, first of all, too difficult for the musicians to play, too difficult for the uh, conductors to accompany and to synchronise. It's very sad that Shostakovich himself never, he was a fabulous musician, a very good pianist, but never ever uh, reckoned to be a conductor. I think he tried to conduct once a Beethoven symphony and decided conducting was not thing, something he could do. If he could have conducted it, it would have been a success because he could himself play the whole score. They heard him this is why they were so happy. They could play, he could play it all on the piano and make it fit the film, but none of the conductors could replicate that with the orchestra. In fact, a letter he sent to one of the uh, conductors in Moscow who tried to do it in the same year says, oh, in this uh, theatre, the orchestra plays this part, this and part, but the rest I have to play on the piano because they can't make it fit. But it is uh, a remarkable achievement, the first film Score and actually his last silent film score because the next film he was going to write music for, Odna, in 1931, was already written when sound was coming in, the first sound films in Russia. He was to write about 50 more film scores after that, all then all for sound films. They span his whole career, this early period where he was writing ideal, uh, idealistic type of music, then when he was silenced by Lenin and was had to write propaganda film music, which was also great craftsmanship. And when he was at the end of his life, he had nothing to lose. He could go more back to idealist things. And like many uh, composers, when they get to later life, turn to Shakespeare, actually. And his last two films are Shakespeare films, Hamlet and Lear. And also as a composer, as they get older, they learn how to write stronger and more uh, concise emotions with less notes. So these, note, these scores also sum up a wealth of ideas and things with far fewer notes than he used earlier in his life. Uh, all his film music is worth a study. This particular score is though the, the score of a young idealistic man.